Hi guys, Midwest Outdoors. I'm here with the, uh, another video. Um, just this time I'm talking about some pistols that I own and uh, why I like them and whatnot. Um, I, uh, a lot of you have you know, your favorite cartridges, the 45 ACP, the 9mm, 40 Smith & Wesson and stuff. I'm not going to really get into the, the argument of um, the cartridges and stuff, but I wanted a full-size um, 45 ACP uh combat pistol basically something I could use for in the house for home defense um, I could also transition it into a hunting role I'll talk more about that later um, and uh, kind of uh, if um, you know martial law was declared World War three or whatever you want to call it you know I'm not really saying anything like that's gonna happen but just where if for some reason some natural disaster whatever it is um, there's chaos in the streets and you're, you know, openly carrying a pistol is not going to be a problem. It's not like where, you know, it's a normal day and, you you know, you conceal carry them 99.9% .9 of the time. Nothing's ever going to happen. Um, this would be that 0.01% where something has happened and, you know, there's complete chaos. And, you know, it, it doesn't really matter if you walk down the street with a pistol in a drop leg holster or on your side because that is actually a good thing in that situation because people know that you're armed and stay away from you and I wanted a pistol that has you know 45 ACP and full capacity so that you know I can uh, be able to defend myself and my family and uh, you know not and nine millimeters are fine and I'll get into that a little bit later too um, but I wanted you know like I said the 45 ACP uh, and, and I'm not worried about the size or the weight in that uh, scenario at all so I wanted to go, you know, with a big, uh, bigger round, more knockdown power, and, um, you know, like I said, I'm not worried about the weight or anything of like that because I'd be openly carrying it most of the time, anyways. But um, this pistol fulfills a lot of roles for me. Uh, as you can see, I have two of them. Um, I used to have um, some nine millimeter XDs and some other stuff, and I actually condensed all my stuff down. Um, I have two classes of of pistols pretty much now. Um, I have my full size pistols. Uh, for this kind of stuff that I'm talking about now, and um, I have my concealed carry pistols. I, that's the only two really classes of pistols that I have uh, that I actually have a use for. And um, so this, I, I wanted a full-size combat 45, and then my concealed carry pistols. I wanted something that was a mid to subcompact in a nine millimeter to fill that role. Um, but I'll talk about that later, and I'll make another video on that probably some other time. Um, but these are the, the one side and, and that, that way I only have to buy um, depending on what caliber you choose um, I choose just two calibers uh, ideally I wanted to downsize everything and, and only have to buy one kind of ammunition um, which currently that's what I have but um, like I said I'll be adding the concealed carry pistols here I've got them on on order and stuff um, and I'm gonna go with nine millimeter for them just because um, in that scenario I'm worried about lightweight compactness and everything and I want um, more rounds for that so I'm gonna end up going to a nine millimeter I could go with the XDS in 45 and I almost did um, I'm still kinda debating that but I think I'm gonna end up going with a subcompact nine millimeter for concealed carry stuff but anyways back to the full-size 45s um, I really like these pistols they have a lot of good features on them and um, I can uh, go over a couple with I mean they've been out for years and years and years and they work really well uh, I never really had any problems with them as far as jamming or anything like that. The only time I've ever had any, I've shot a couple, you know, at least a couple thousand rounds through each of these, and the only time I've ever had any problem was I had a box of 45 ACP that I left out um, in one of my duck hunting bags for whatever reason. I think I might have taken it to the range or something, and uh, I got soaking wet. Um, so every shell was just corroded to hell. It was just, you know, I mean, horrible. And it shot most of them, but some of them it was it was hanging up and jamming with them and stuff. Um, some of them wouldn't even fire because, like I said, they were sitting in water. So that's not really the gun's fault. But um, that's the only time I've ever seen any problems with them. And it's it was the ammunition, not the gun. Otherwise, been 100% reliable. Um, they're really, really nice. I, and I like them. I actually did own an XD45, just the regular service model with the 4-inch barrel. And I went to, these are the 5-inch tactical models. And I actually went to the 5-inch, and it really, really helped me shoot. I'm not, I don't claim to be the best shot in the world with a pistol. I'm pretty good with these, but um, just going from that four to five inch for that extra sight radius, a little extra weight, um, 
it, it really helped as far as felt recoil and accuracy for me anyway. Um, and a lot of a lot of with pistols is just the skill of the shooter, you know. And you know, like I said, I don't claim to be the best shooter in the world, but it did really did help me a lot going from that four inch to that five inch uh, model. And um, the recoil was noticeably less too because you have that longer slide spreading out the recoil impulse than the snappier, shorter uh, recoil impulse from a shorter barrel and slide. Um, some of the features on these guns, I've actually done a bunch of aftermarket stuff to them, but just, you know, your basic stuff, I'll see, I'm loaded, but you have your slide stop right here, take down lever right here, I just oiled these up and stuff so they're, they're a little bit oily right now, but um, pretty simple to uh, disassemble. All you do is lock the slide back, flip the takedown lever up, release the slide forward. You do have to pull the trigger on these, so make sure they're unloaded, of course. Slide comes right off, and there's your uh, fire housing, all that good stuff. Your barrel just pops out, slide lever, spring, barrel, everything, simple, comes out, fast, easy. And then to put together, stick everything back in place. Just making sure everything's good. Slide it back on. Lock it into uh, position and flip your takedown lever down. At least the slide, you're good to go. So, easy to field strip, easy to clean. Uh, I like that about them. And uh, pistols, uh, from what I've. Uh, gathered over the years and stuff it's just like rifles you know there really is a personal preference there there's a lot of good makers out there i'd say the big three are um well big four maybe is the springfield xds the smith and wesson m and p's and the uh the glocks and then you could add the the sigs like the pt26 that family in there um and you really got to try them out and figure which one fits your hand the best and you know because you're going to shoot a lot a lot better with a gun that fits you better um, and I usually tend to like a, a low bore axis gun these are a little bit higher than like a Glock or whatever but the gun fits my hand so well that uh, I tend to shoot better with it so I did own a, a Glock 45 and I ended up selling it I couldn't shoot nearly as well with uh, with that gun as these they because they fit my hand so much better um, so make sure you really try out the guns your, yourself you know and uh, get a feel for them and uh, also, as you can see, um, put some grip tape on here. It's like skid tape, just 3M skid tape at Home Depot. Some people may not like it, it might be too aggressive, but for me it really gives you a good purchase on there. If your you know, hands are sweaty, um, that thing's not going to be slipping at all. And that stuff's relatively cheap, adhesive-backed. Um, the sites it comes with, you can get it all different sites. You can get, you know, 3 dot your standard steel three dot these are uh, true uh, true glow TFO is they're called and what those are is a uh, metal site with um, fiber optics front and rear and tritium so they glow in the dark Get another look at that here so they glow in the dark and they glow during the daylight which is great and these are all green. You can get green and yellow. If I was going to do it again, I would get green and yellow just because of the difference in the color. Um, helps you, um, you know, line them up. When they're all green to me, I, it's just, it's not bad, but especially in a, if you're in a combat situation, you know, fighting for your life type situation, then um, I don't think you're going to be using the sights really that much anyways because most of the people that I know uh, law enforcement officers that have actually been in gunfights and guys in the military. I have family that's been in the military. They say usually when you're in a close engagement, you don't usually see the sights on your gun um, because you, you know you just don't. You know you, you have, that's where muscle memory and a fit of the gun is way more important than anything else. Um, so take that into consideration. But those are the sights that I have on this this model, and uh, I really like them. They really work well. They're nice and rounded. So if you really wanted to carry this concealed, you know, like in a shoulder holster or something. These are a good option for you because everything's rounded. Um, the front is a little bit squared off, but even the edges of where it's squared off are, are, are rounded more, so it's not going to catch on anything. Um, the triggers as they come from the factory on these XDs are eh, they're all right. You know, they're not too bad. Um, 
I've had these reworked. So you can see here to about three pounds. There's the take up. Pretty uh pretty crisp, crisp, you know, clean, reset and everything. Um you know, and that's that, that cost me, I don't know, I can't remember, it was a local gun shop that did it for me that kinda knows about that stuff and um I think it was like 150 bucks for the trigger job and to smooth all the parts and all that good stuff. I did it up at the same time uh, that I had the sights installed and stuff. But anyways, um, back to a little bit of the specs of the guns. Um, they're 8.3 inches long and 5.75 inches high. 32 ounces without the magazine, um, or with the empty magazine, I'm sorry, but without anything in the magazine, obviously, no bullets. So they're pretty heavy, but it's actually nice when you talk about full-size combat 45, when weight is not a not really a big concern, if it's just like urban setting, like I said, for, for you know, if there's martial law or whatever, and you're, you're walking around with your gun on your hip, where you're not going to be traveling immense distances and stuff, where the weight's not really that big of a deal, but where the firepower of the gun is, you know, as far as rounds and the, the round that you're shooting, um, then, you know, that, that's, that's kind of what these are for. So there's that, um, nice steel magazines. They, uh, hold 13 rounds in the magazine and one in the chamber. So that's 14 rounds of 45 ACP with a double stack magazine. Um, it's pretty much the highest capacity or one of the highest capacities you can get in a 45. Um, that's a lot of firepower. Another reason I like to, like these guns and that I went with them. Um, they have, some people don't like this, uh, the grip safety, kind of like a 1911. For me, I actually like it. It's another measure of safety, and it's nothing I have to flick off or touch or anything like that, because um, it's just like a Glock on the front, but also where it has a trigger safety. Um, as you can see right there, you have to depress that before the gun will fire. Um, so you have to do both of them, and these guns will fire without a magazine in them. As you can see, no magazine. And they do fire, which is nice. I like that. And, um, you know, so it's just a good all-around package. Sits well in your hand. It has more of a 1911 grip angle for you guys that, you know, if you have a 1911 and you want to transition to a more, quote-unquote, modern type pistol, um, this is a really good one for you um, because it's pretty much the same type of grip as a 1911. Um, there's a lot of aftermarket parts for these now. I mean, not as much as a, a Glock or whatever, but, you know, there's quite a few. Um, as you can see on this one here, I have a Storm Lake match grade uh, barrel, and it's a 6-inch barrel because I use this gun um, for when I go bow hunting. This is my backup. Um, we have a lot of wolves and uh, bears and that kind of thing where I uh, go bow hunting, so I never, I never go out in the woods without a pistol. Um, and... Also, you need to have a uh, six inches from the firing pin uh, barrel length uh, in Wisconsin to be able to legally hunt with a, uh, a pistol. And so this makes a uh, handy package. Um, I do a lot of drives and stuff, and I have a, a Browning X-Bolt, which I reviewed, and it's a great rifle. Um, and But in the brush, when I'm doing drives through popple thickets and that kind of stuff, where, I mean, you can only see five yards in front of you. I've had it where deer get up, and there's no way you can get your gun up and shoot at a deer... Um, in time in order for before they get away especially with a scope on um, and that's where I kind of developed this this system of I use this for short range and I use my other my expo for everything else and it works really well I actually haven't killed any deer with it yet um, I just just got this uh, a couple years ago and I just started using it um, just haven't had that opportunity yet um, because it just hasn't come up but it's I'm sure it's coming um, and uh, the 45 ECP with a 6 inch barrel if you get like a plus P round um, easily will kill a whitetail. Um, I would say max range of about 20 yards or so. Um, n you know, not plenty, plenty farther enough to shoot for what I'm trying to use it for. And like, it's really, really thick red brush or popple slashings when a deer jumps up right in front of me, literally. And sometimes I'll jump up and stand there, and where I just can't swing my gun around if it's behind me or whatever. I can't swing my gun around uh, through all that brush and get a shot. So this is really uh, a nice, a nice package, and I can carry it on my hip. And I don't have to really worry about it. I can sling my, when I go through that, that's another nice thing about it is when I go through that thick stuff, I can sling my X-Bolt um, crossways over my shoulder, you know, on my back, keep my gun protected and out of the way of all the branches and stuff. Just pull this out. And uh, I wanted a semi-automatic instead of a uh, revolver. I guess, well, you can just get a 357 or a 44 Magnum. That's true. Um, I've had them before, but 
I like a double action only striker fired pistol because I don't have to cock a hammer or anything. All I have to do is pick the gun up, aim it, and shoot. Don't have to mess around with anything, anything else. And personally, that's what I wanted to do. So plus, I also wanted to have um, the ability to you know take this barrel out, which you came with the original barrel, five inch barrel, and uh, use it for defense or whatever. Um, but this one, I have two guns, so I just just want to keep in the house for home defense. And this one, I always just leave set up this way um, for hunting. And uh, you know, with with my holster that I'm using right now, I have a Blackhawk Sherpa, and um, fits in there perfectly. And there's no bottom to it, so it just sticks out like that. And I haven't had any problems with it um, as far as you know poking me or being uncomfortable or anything like that. Um, especially these, these Sherpa holsters, if you've never seen them, uh, they're really nice. They lock in there. They won't unlock until you depress. They teach you to draw with your finger. Not on the trigger, but alongside, and uh, it comes with a paddle holster and also a belt clip holster. I really like this. Um, I also have a drop leg holster um, that this stripper will attach to, and it works really well. And um, I have a different set of sights on this gun too. Um, I have a Dawson Precision adjustable rear sight, and this is uh, tritium. It's not fiber optic, but it is tritium. As you can see, it's kind of glowing there in the dark. And um, I wanted the adjustable sight on this gun because obviously I have the longer barrel and I want to have it more accurate and stuff um, for shooting uh, if I'm going to hunt with it. So that makes a good package for me. Uh, but I wouldn't take this for concealed carry really because the sight's quite a bit higher because it's adjustable and uh, it does it will snag on your clothes and stuff a little bit. And the front is a uh, a Trigicon white dot with uh, tr uh, tritium in the front. So. They're not a match set. I bought them, and I had the height, you know, the height of each of them matched and stuff, and uh, it works. It works really well for me. So even in like a low light, uh, if I if I wanted to hunt with this out of my tree stand, if a deer was pretty much right on top of me or something, just for fun, um, you know, you can use it in low light situations too. But uh, it's going to be a fun day. I'll probably post a video when I do get a deer with this, uh, doing a drive or something, because it's going to be you know something fun to do and more effective, I think, and and. Uh, you know, I, I can get a shot at a deer that maybe I would never have gotten to, you know, I would have saw but never have gotten to shoot at because it was so close to me and I couldn't swing my gun in time because of uh, how thick it was in there. There's some really nasty thick stuff that we go through, and uh, I think this will help me out a lot. But uh, other than the barrel and the sights, um, the guns are the same. They're identical. And um, you can, like I said, always swap out the original barrel for this if you want to use it for, you know, whatever else. But I, I have two, so I just leave it set up this way. Um, I really like them. They have uh, the triggers, like I said, you can upgrade them or have them upgraded by your gunsmith. Um, I would recommend that because they are a little bit gritty and stuff out of the out of the package. They're not horrible, but they're like a combat trigger. Um, I would I would definitely recommend going up. I mean, you can see I don't really have the obviously the stock ones to show you, but um, take up, boom. And there's the reset you know, positive and short. So, just a great pair of pistols, and uh, like I said, they can, they can that's what the rules that they fulfill for me, um, like a house gun or without rule of law type gun that you're going to carry on your hip and a drop holster, even on your side, uh, that where you want maximum capacity of a nice big round, maximum firepower, um, and also transitioning, you know, into a hunting role, uh, which maybe you guys never thought of before with this type of pistol, but um, it can be done. Um, I would say, if you can, I did try a Glock 10 millimeter. Um, a Glock 10 millimeter, the cartridge itself is going to be more adapt if you want to try to transition it into hunting, like, or if you want to have it for defense for bears, or if you want to bear hunt with it or something. If you're going to run dogs, uh, that's another thing to think about. I mean, that'll that'll kill a bear plenty if you're going to the kind of guy that runs dogs and trees them, or even if they're uh, bait on the ground. Something like this would be a lot more handy to carry on your side than having a rifle slung over your back when you got leashes and dogs and that kind of thing. So something to think about, but. For me, um, the Glock 10 millimeter, I didn't fit my hand. These fit so much better, so that's why I went with this. Otherwise, I probably would have went with the Glock 10 millimeter. But um, personally, that's just what happened with me. So, um, you know, they're a great set of pistols, and uh, I mean, you can. You know, I'm a big guy, and I could conceal it in the winter time if I had a heavy jacket on or something. I could easily conceal it, but they are they are heavy. Um, not not as heavy as a full size 1911. So if you're the kind of guy that likes to carry a 1911 on you. Um, but you want more capacity, I'd say this is a great gun for you because it, it is lighter than most 1911s, um, but you still have all that full capacity, um, 14 rounds with one in the chamber. Um, it's really ergonomic. 
Uh, I like the fact that you don't have to have a hammer or mess with a hammer. Um, just double action only. Um, melanite finish, which is like a black nitride, really tough. And uh, so if, if you're a 1911 guy, this would be the perfect gun to transition you to a uh, more modern, quote-unquote, type pistol. But uh, I think that's pretty much about it. Uh, we got a, a front, the front of the trigger guard is uh, pretty much squared off. So a lot of you guys, if, if you shoot with your finger up there for whatever reason, you'll like that. It's just barely scooped out and has a lip on the end, so that's a really nice feature, too. Um, so that, there's something for you to think about. Oh, also, uh, loaded, loading indicators are, are nice on this gun. You have uh, your cocking indicator, which you can actually feel back here. You can see that its uh, firing pin protrudes through the back there. Let's see if you can... But, so if it's dark and the lights are out or some robbers cut the lights to your house or the power to your house or something, you want to make sure your gun is loaded or whatever, you can feel that the, the gun is cocked. And actually when, it's, when the gun is loaded, um, you can see there's a slot right here. This little tab will flip up when the gun is loaded. So there's a nice positive way for you to feel if it's cocked and loaded um, in the dark, which just is another you know safety feature and another feature that I really like. Um, so... That's pretty much it uh, off the top of my head. Um, good slide serrations on the back and also on the front. Um, there's a couple little modifications, like I said, the grip tape and the sights and stuff that I did to it. But um, it does come, I can show you the case here. Hard case. It comes with a, uh, two magazines, two steel magazines. Uh, it comes with a, sp a speed loader, which works really, really well. It comes with a, a simple plastic holster you can clip onto your belt, and uh, it's in one of my kits right now, but it does come with a double plastic mag pouch, which works well. Um, so you do get a lot for your money. Um, a great gun, and I paid, I got these guns quite a few years ago, so I paid a lot less for them than what they want for them. Now I think I paid about 500 or 525 for them. Now they're, I think, over 600 and some. But uh, quality pistols, really, uh, really happy with them really accurate. Um, with this gun here, uh, my friends, I, I wish I would have recorded it, my friends see me, I can hit um, two liter soda bottles at 100 yards with it. Um, and uh, I'm not saying every, every single time, but I've done it and you know I can do it. And when, with practice, um, you know these guns can be really accurate, especially a five inch model and this one with it being a six inch barrel. Um, it can be done. So not that I would ever shoot at anything that far other than targets just for fun. But it's just kind of cool to know that you can do it. Um, so, yeah, as far as group size, um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not the best shot in the world, but, um, I would say two and a half inches at 25 yards is easily doable, uh, for somebody like me if you practice and whatnot. Um, but that's all relative because I think group size is mostly, uh, has to do with the, um, the shooter. Um, you know, if you're a guy like Rob Latham or something that shoots all the time, it doesn't matter what gun you pick up, you're going to, you know, shoot it well for the most part. So that's my review, uh, kind of some cool things we're hunting and some modifications for the Springfield XD 45 uh, tactical 5-inch model and also the Storm Lake match barrel that came with it, or it didn't come with it, uh, it uh, I ordered it off, off of their website. But um, the, ba the barrel, if you guys are curious, I think it was a hundred and some dollars, and I'm 150-ish or 140-ish I want to say, so not too bad, easily replaceable, so um, there you go. and. Uh, can't think of anything else out of the top of my head, but if you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them in there. As always, uh, be respectful, and uh, I'll do the same, and uh, I'd love to hear any stories. or you know, I love M&Ps and, and Glocks, too. Uh, it all depends on what fits your hand and stuff. Um, that, I think, is the most important thing. So don't think I'm trashing anybody else's choices or cartridges or guns because there's tons of great choices out there. It all has to do with what you want to do with it and what fits you. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks.